are ready for our third speaker, uh, and that is Terry Proto for Virtual Reality Marketing. Uh, I've known Terry for several years as well. Terry manages a group on LinkedIn with 75,000 metaverse and VR and XR enthusiasts and hosts a monthly networking event. Uh, I think we've got about 15,000 people that have signed up for the monthly networking event on LinkedIn. Uh, so uh, Terry is a very busy person, and uh, he's in a creative location. Uh, so I want to thank uh, Terry for going through all the hoops and work that you did to uh, make sure you could join us for today. Terry, uh, go ahead. You have 15 minutes. Well, first of all, thank you, Joel, for having me uh, this event. I'm really honored to be with uh, as this panel of speakers. The presentation has been super interesting since now. So today, what I want to talk about is how uh, AI accelerate XR. And uh, so a few words about me to give you a little bit of context. Uh, I am Terry Proto. I am co-founder and CEO of Virtual Reality Marketing. Um, my background is in video games. I started working in video games as far back as the 90s, uh, went through all of the evolution of the 3D and interactive 3D technology, and then moved on to advertising, where we've been creating interactive 3D content for brands and agencies on the web as far back as 2005. So all of this is not new. And then moved on when uh, XR restarted, X, uh, VR, AR, the metaverse restarted in 2015, 16 to um, consult with companies and basically help connect leading uh, AR, VR, metaverse creators with uh, enterprise clients. And um, number one question. So my presentation is going to be much more high level than what Jordan and Tojin did before. And I like to, you know, kind of go back for, to the basics because, you know, not everyone knows what's AI and, and there's a lot of expectation coming out of Hollywood. And, uh, and AI is simply like the ability for a machine to be able to perform those high level cognitive functions that we usually associate with the humans. And you have machine learning and uh, AI that's based on a lot of data. I think Jordan went uh, a lot on la the large language models and ChatGPT just before Tojin was talking about Gen AI and, uh, and how it's applied for creative and visuals. Another type of AI that we don't talk so much about right now is AGI, artificial general intelligence. And that doesn't exist right now. It's still hypoth hypothetical and in the future because right now, all of the types of AIs that we are using are very limited and specific to one area. You don't have, you know, the general AI, the Jarvis, if you will, of Tony Stark, who's able to answer any question on anything. And same question, what is XR? Well, XR is, means extended reality, and it's the umbrella terms that covers all of the immersive technologies. So you have augmented reality, and to go really quick, augmented reality is when you layer digital information in front of the real world. So that's when it's done for your, when you're using Pokemon Go on your phone, that's augmented reality. You have the real world and you see the augmented augmentation on your phone. And then you've got virtual reality and that's when you wear a headset. And then all of a sudden it's like more like the matrix or video games when you enter into the virtual world. And mixed reality is kind of the mix of both. And so when we talk about XR, it's the terms that we use to talk about all of those technologies and also the metaverse. And why is the metaverse such a topic? It's because while it's the next generation of the internet, we are moving from 2D uh, content, like flat web pages, to 3D content. And uh, with all of those AR, VR technologies, and that's changing everything. And it's a $5 trillion opportunity um, by 2030. And so what you read a lot in the media right now is how, you know, uh, you've read like every year there's a darling of the media. So two years ago, it was blockchain. Last year was the metaverse. And then this year it's uh, AI. And the media kind of often pits those technology against each other. And so you've read, for instance, in the spring, a lot of titles like AI just killed the metaverse and, you know, the metaverse it saw last year. And, 
And the reality couldn't be more different. All of those technologies are converting, converging, and they are mutually augmenting each other. And I like this super simple analogy of the plane and the car. And, you know, the plane has not killed the car. You would say, hey, the plane, it's bigger, it's faster, and it goes further. So cars are useless. And hell no, it's different. Like cars and planes coexist in this world along with bikes and boats and trains. And it's all, you know, giving us more tools and more richness. And it's the same thing here. And if you kind of continue and dig deeper, what's really interesting as there was this fantastic presentation at uh, AWE is the big conference for all things immersive technology. And that was in June. And Avi Barzev has really tracked the hype cycles of all of those various technologies. So I love this chart because it's real and it's showing you over the last, like, since the 80s, because AI, VR, the metaverse, all of this are not new technologies. And Right now, everyone was talking about is talking about AI, but like last year, as I was saying, it was the metaverse, and before it was this, and before it was the cyberspace. And so, what is important to remember, and what experts know in the field, is that the media is really all about the attention and the grabbing the big headlines. And sometimes the journalists don't have also the deep understanding of the technologies and the implications. So, you want to take what you read in the media with a grain of salt. It's important. And uh, talking of the past, this is something I really like. So if you look back at the early 2000s, you kind of had the same thing with, uh, uh, you know, when the Internet of 2023 is very different from the Internet of 1996 and 2000 and 2005 and 2010. And so in 1996, you didn't even have video. And then you started to have like broadband. And after broadband, you had, rich media and video and after rich media you had social media and then you had mobile when that and the iphone was like 2007 but truly people started having mobile phones and like uh, smartphones in 2010 or something and so at the time same thing you could put all of those technologies together uh, against each other pit against each other and say hey mobile is going to kill this and that and when you look back it's actually the opposite um when what's happened is that when you combine social and mobile and online video, it's giving birth to new applications that we didn't have before and we couldn't think of before. And so YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all of this is when you take the video and you have this on your mobile first and you have the social components, well, you create this new thing that's massive hit. And that's exactly what we're talking about here with the XR and AI. Literally, you've got the exact same dynamics at play where the technology are not competing, but they're amplifying and enhancing each other's capabilities. So I'm going to go through a bunch of examples, but this is a bit technical. But Maya is the main software. There's a few main software, Maya, 3ds Max. They're called 3D packages, and you use them to create 3D worlds and 3D environments and 3D characters. Uh, Maya is one of the big three, and they launched at SIGGRAPH. It's a big conference for 3D graphics, video effects, video games in Los Angeles uh, in August. So it closed like last week. And they're integrating AI tools into Maya, and that's going to help the artist to do, you know, the generative AI for the textures and the materials and the HDR images. And all of this is creating a lot of improvement in terms of uh, production. And talking of the key use cases of uh, AI versus XR, you've got content creation and you've got 3D spatial capture and you've got virtual production. You've got my favorite AI powered digital humans. And uh, another one, which is big, I'm traveling a lot. And also with the metaverse, we can have people coming from all over the world. It's the real time translation and real time communication, universal communication. So moving on to the, the first one. Um, and Tojin just told a lot about this, so it's practical for me because I don't have to go into detail. I can stay high level. Um, today, generative AI is great for content creation. This is an image that's pulled out of mid-journey. And uh, as Jordan was saying, they're trained on massive data sets based on the internet. And, and now you've got a list, and I'm going to share also links about this at the end of my presentation. You can use this for anything. You can use it for search 
for text, for images, for audio, for video, for conversation. And so the, the names, the big names that you keep popping are ChatGPT, Dali and Midjourney is there for images, Synthesia is for video, OK. And, and that's where we are today. What's really exciting is that today you can create images or movies. What you can't just quite create are 3D worlds. And why is that exciting? It's because for the metaverse, one of the challenges is that the budgets are high because it's really complicated to create those very sophisticated environments. What we've seen in video games was the explosion of budgets when we were going from the PlayStation 1 to the PlayStation 5 because there's so much more detail to create. And so if your PlayStation 1 team was like 5, 10 people, your PlayStation 5 team is like 200 people and the budget of your PlayStation 5 video game is like 50 million to $150 million. It's like in the same ballpark of the Hollywood movies now. And so having AI, generative AI, be able to help generate full 3D worlds, um, it's going to bring massive improvements in terms of efficiency and budgets because those worlds are very resource intensive to, to build. Um, another one, uh, and I'm trying, going to try to not be too technical here, is the 3D spatial capture. And that has made a lot of progress. Uh, now you can go as far as scanning you know, objects with your phone. Um, you have rigs with a lot of cameras, but the technology is so advanced now that you're starting to have good results, even with phones. And to be fair, phones today are very powerful. And, um, and translate it into a volumetric render that can be used in all kinds of applications. And so use your phone, get 3D data coming out of it. Um, moving on, virtual production. This one is also very interesting. Virtual production, if you're not familiar with it, it's been popularized by movies like The Mandalorian, where instead of having a green screen and um, uh, you know compositing the images, the, the virtual images afterwards, you have like big LED screens on set, on location, and the camera can shoot and see uh, images that are coming out of a 3D package. And that's how you do the super realistic environments for Disney Mandalorian. And again, AI can be used at many stages of virtual production, like uh, um, send generation I was talking about, object placement, lighting adjustment, work with the lights, with the directors. Um, and all of that, it's really important because at the end of the day, it's all more efficiency and those budgets are high. So when you're more, when you're faster to produce, you're cheaper to produce and it makes a huge uh, change for the bottom line. AI powered digital humans. So this one is a big one. I want to take a minute to talk about it and not go too fast. So we're at a stage where in 3D, you have 3D characters and you've had them in games and movies for a really long time. And they've become really sophisticated. So the image here is an image coming out of a tool called Unreal. So Unreal and Unity are the big you know, uh, game engines that are used to create uh, virtual environments for VR and the metaverse. And MetaHuman is one coming from Unreal where they've used all of their technology to create fairly easily those digital humans that are now getting quite photorealistic that you can use in all kinds of uh, interactive uh, content, immersive content. Tiny little problem until now was that those digital humans were just empty puppets. They were puppets, but you know that weren't animated. And all up till now, in all of those games and interactive, you had script content. And the cool thing of AI is that you can power your beautiful puppet with a large language model like ChatGPT, and all of a sudden you have a digital human that looks like a person, but also talks like a person, and you have an infinity of application for social interaction, training simulation, games, where all of a sudden every person you meet may not be a real person, but they look like a real person and they talk and react to you like a real person and, and you can have a real conversation with them. And if you have this experience in a VR headset, it's extremely powerful. Um, Real-time communication, this one is fantastic and goes very well with the previous example of if you have your digital humans and if you have your environments in VR, and like, for instance, the webinar today, we have people joining from all over the world and we all have the convention of speaking in English because, you know, I'm French and I'm talking to you from Madrid in Spain, yet I speak to you in English. Uh, however, not everyone can speak English and having this ability in the metaverse is really important to have 
uh, universal translation. And so I can talk to you in French and you hear me in English or you can you hear me in German or Italian or whatever language is really powerful and it's important in those shared virtual worlds. And um, to go quick, highly, highly recommend you have a look. This company, Antler, made this uh, landscape of the generative AI and it's going really quick. Uh, companies are popping everywhere. So grab this link. I'm going to put it in the chat afterwards. You've got all the tools for all of the various text images and video. And just to wrap up, um, I think what we're seeing, we're super excited because for us, it's an exponential future where those technologies are not competing, but augmenting each other. And at the AWE conference, Oin Barr, the founder of AWE, said in one word, in one sentence, the summary, and that's, I stole this for, the, for this um, talk, AI accelerate XR. And that is me. And that was very good, uh, Terry. Thank you so much.